So Microsoft just launched Office 2021. This is a huge jump from Office 2019, especially for us Excel users. So if you're already on 2016 or 2019, and for whatever reason your IT doesn't want to upgrade to 365, just hope that they upgrade to Office 2021. And aside from Excel, at the end of this video, I'm going to cover some of the key highlights coming in PowerPoint, Word, and Outlook. So let's just quickly take a look at all you're getting, depending on whether you're upgrading from 2016 or 2019. So Excel 2019 came with six new functions. So if you're jumping from 2016 to 2021, you want to check these ones out too. In Excel 2021, we have nine new functions that are going to completely change the way you work with Excel. I'm quickly going to explain each of these just to give you an idea of how they work. I have detailed videos about most of these functions separately. You're going to be spending less time figuring out how to combine formulas to get your tasks done. A formula that looked like this in Excel 2019 is now going to look like this. If you come across one of these functions and you think, yes, I can use this, please comment below because I'd love to know. Now let's get to it. The first amazing function is the unique function. This allows you to get a distinct list of values, basically get a unique list. Let's say here we want to get a unique list for our departments. We just have to type unique and all we need is to select our range. Close bracket, press enter, and we have our unique list. The old way of solving this was quite complex. This is how it looked. We had to write our formula and then we had to drag it down, just like with standard Excel formulas. We don't have to drag our formula down anymore if we use these new functions, also referred to as dynamic array functions, because these functions spill. You have to be careful though, because if something is blocking them, so if I had some text here, I'm going to get the hash spill error. So you just have to remove that blockage and let your formula spill. The next amazing function is the filter function. This is one of my favorites because it returns multiple match results. So not just the first match, but all the matches. So here we have the list of names and departments, we want to return a list of staff who work in the selected department. So we want to see the names of the people who work in finance. We want to grab it from here. All we have to do is start with filter. The array is what we want to get back. So ultimately, we just want to see the names. Next is what do we want to include? This is similar to the if logical tests. Only those lines or only those names should be included where department from this range equals this cell. Last optional argument is what do we want to see if there are no matches? Let's just go with empty. Close bracket, press enter, and we have the people who work in finance. If I switch this to procurement, these are the list of people who work in procurement, sales, and so on. So notice my range automatically shrinks and expands because it's spilling. The old way of doing this was like this. You had this crazy function here, plus you had to get help from intermediate calculations. It's all over now with the filter function. Next up is the sort function. This function allows you to dynamically sort your ranges. So let's say I want to get a sorted list of division. I just have to start off with sort. All I need is my range. This can also be a table range. Then just close bracket, press enter, and you have your sorted list. If you wanted it the other way around, because default is ascending, so if I wanted this in descending order, I just have to take advantage of these optional arguments. So the first one is which column I want to sort. I just have one column. Next one is the sort order. I need minus one for descending. Now I get my list the other way around. Now, if you wanted to get a unique sorted list, you just have to put this part inside the unique function and then sort this. The great thing is that if this happens to be a table, so I'm just going to press control T, convert it to a table. And let's say I want to add something to this. It's automatically going to get added to my list and it's going to be sorted automatically. Now there is so much more you can do with the sort function and with all the other functions that I'm covering in this video. So if you want to master these functions, check out my complete course on xclplus.com. Link is going to be in the description. 
Next up, the sort by function. This one allows us to get a list sorted by another range. So for example, let's say we just want to get the list of staff names, but sorted based on the salary that they get. All I need to do is start with sort by. The array is what I want to get back. I just want to get back a list of names. By which range am I sorting this by? By this range. How am I sorting this? I want highest to lowest, so I'm going to go with descending, close bracket per center, and I have my list sorted by another column. Next up is the XLOOKUP function. This is another of my favorites. So if you've been using VLOOKUP and you've struggled with VLOOKUP before, forget about it. XLOOKUP is the better and easier version. It can look to the left and to the right, so you don't have to worry about your column order. So here, for example, we have department name and salary. We have the name here and we want to grab their salary and then we want to grab their department. So notice the position of department is behind name. Now here you probably know how to write the VLOOKUP for this. The XLOOKUP version is simpler to write, even though it looks like it has a lot of things going on, but don't worry because a lot of them is optional. We need the lookup value, which is right here. Where are we looking this up? We don't have to worry about selecting entire ranges, just where this name is sitting in and it's sitting in here. Then what do we want to return? We want to return the salary. We don't need to worry about an exact match because that's the default. We're going to press enter and we have our salary. If we want to account for missing data, so if we don't want to get an error when we type a name that's not there, we can take advantage of these optional arguments. So if not found, I can put check name. Now here comes the great part. Let's find the department for the person. So lookup value is right here. The lookup array is the same as before. This time my return array is behind the name. That's no problem. Just select it, close bracket, press enter, and we have our department. So the old way of doing this, especially if you wanted to go backwards, was to use index and match which is a function that a lot of people struggle with. And then we also had to put it inside the if error function to account for names that don't exist in our data set. Forget about all this, just use xlookup. Next up is the xmatch function. This returns the relative position of an item in a list. So if you used to use the match function, you can now use xmatch. The difference is that it has one less argument to worry about. So here I have a list of staff names and the sport that they registered for. Now I just want to know whether they are in this list or not. I can quickly do a check using xmatch. My lookup value is this name here. My lookup array is right here. Now I don't have to worry about the zero that you used to use in the match function. You just close the bracket because it's checking by default for an exact match. When you press enter, you get the position of this name in this range. Now I can pull this down, but I have to fix my referencing here or what I can do because we can now use spilled ranges. I can select this entire list, press enter, and I get my complete list with a single click. So anywhere I have an A, these people aren't on this list. Now I can filter by this, get the list, call them, get them to register for a sport. If you don't want to see an A here, you can also put this function inside an if and return an alternate result. Next cool function is the sequence function. This function gives you a list of numbers in the sequence and order that you want. So just for quick demonstration, if we start off with sequence and we say we want 10, 10 rows, close bracket press enter, we get a list of numbers from one to 10. Now, what if we wanted to get a list of dates that go from the start date to this end date? Well, we can use sequence for that as well. The list of dates we have depends on our range. So I'm just going to go with end date minus start date. That should give me the number of rows of dates that I need. Number of columns. I just need a single column so I can put a one or I can skip this. Start is my start date here and step by default is one. So I can just close the bracket, press enter, and I get a list of dates. They're just shown as numbers. So I'm going to select my column, update the formatting to a short date. Now I go all the way down to the 30th. So I just have to add a one to this to get to the 
first. If you don't want it day by day, but you want it for every seven days, you can use seven here as your step. Next up is the rand array function. This function gives a bunch of random values all in one go. So let's say here, I want to get random grades for these people for the different subjects. I'm going to start off with rand array. I want random numbers that go to four rows and six columns here. Now, if I just close bracket and press enter, I'm going to get random numbers between zero and one. And every time I refresh this, these numbers are going to change. But I have more arguments here that I can use. If I wanted minimum to be one and the maximum random number to be five, I can just input these directly here. When I press enter, I get random numbers between one to five. Now these are decimal numbers, but I have the option to return integer values. Just go with true as the last argument and you get random numbers between one and five. Last on the list is the let function. This function allows you to define names for parts of your formula. So this is great for your longer formulas, especially those formulas that have repetitions or they have calculations that are repeated. So for example, here I'm calculating the threshold only if it's above or below 10%. This part of the formula is repeated. With the let function, I can write it like this. So first I define a name for that part that's repeated, and then I use that name over and over again in my formula. And this can help with readability, but it also helps with performance because the formula is only calculated once, it's saved in memory, and then the result is reused. I have a more detailed video about the let function, so check that out if you're interested. In terms of features, we get all these great tools to improve collaboration. One of those tools is called Sheet View, so that's in the View tab. In the old days, if you would filter this list and someone else is in this file, they're going to see that filtered version. So you're going to influence their work when you start filtering and sorting, but not if you use Sheet View. So let's say I want to filter for the finance department. I can go in Sheet View here, and now whatever I do here doesn't impact the other person's experience. I could even give this view a name, call it the finance department. Whenever I'm done, I can exit this view. Another great feature is the autosave. So even if your Excel happens to crash, you don't have to worry about when you saved it last. Autosave is going to save you. You can of course turn it off if you don't want to have it on because you're just testing stuff and you want to close without saving. It's something I actually do more than I should. Another great feature that was added is when it comes to adding your own custom colors. Before we were restricted to the RGB code, now we can paste in a hex code. There were also more images and illustrations and icons that were added to the list that we used to have. So if I go to icons here, we have images, we have cutout people, we get these funny stickers, illustrations, and if you are in PowerPoint, you also get videos. Now in PowerPoint, we also got a lot of improvements in recording. For instance, now you have a countdown when you press record. You don't have to right mouse click to access the annotation tools. The ink colors are now easily accessible at the lower side here. And you can read the slide notes as you narrate the slideshow and no one is going to see this. You can also show yourself on the screen by turning your camera on or off. Also, if you're upgrading from 2016 to 2021, you're going to get this amazing morph feature that's going to take your presentations to the next level. Word also got improvements in its immersive reader. So this was in Word 2019, but now what you get when you go to the view tab and you select immersive reader, you can decide how many lines you want to focus on. For Outlook, in my opinion, the best feature is instant search. It's so much easier to find stuff now. And if you want to improve your search results even more, check out this separate video I have on this topic. So that's what's new in Office 2021. Now there are more features that I didn't get to discuss here. I just picked the ones that I think are going to be most relevant for you. So there's a link below this video as well with more information. 
But my recommendation, and I didn't get paid to say this, but my recommendation is to upgrade to Office 365 because that way you're gonna be up to date with new functions and you don't have to wait so long to get anything new that comes out. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe if you aren't subscribed and I'm gonna see you in the next video.